In preparing to go to the field, I think you'll find it uh, a lot more advantageous if you go through your equipment and have what uh, would make your collecting a lot more enjoyable situation than getting out in the field and determining that you've left something behind. What I thought I'd do is to show you uh, the kinds of stuff that would be, uh, I think, uh, quite helpful in collecting and materials that I often take to the field with me. Um, first of all, a collecting basket is something that most avid collectors will find is very, very helpful. Uh, wicker baskets seem to be of preference for a lot of people when they can withstand being wet and not deteriorate or break down. Um, this one here, just as an example, is about 40 years old, and as you can see, it's not the worst. It's uh, really um, feeling a little bit of wear on it pretty badly here, but it still works quite well. Uh, I particularly like this one because the handles are quite sturdy. They will bend out of the way, so you can actually get a lot of material in here. Uh, this is a fairly large basket. Um, on the other extreme, if you need to get something to collect your material on very quickly, you can get a a cardboard box and just put some temporary handles in and that works quite well. Now in going out to the field you'll want to have some kind of device or devices to put your material in. Uh, if you're after large fungi like mushrooms and puffballs and similar kinds of uh, fruiting bodies like that you'll find that wax paper is one of the ones that many people use. It provides a certain amount of stability and structure uh, once the material is wrapped in there and it also provides good air movement so you don't have to worry about molds or mildews developing. Another way of putting your material as far as holding is concerned for some of the larger specimens or even for some of the more fragile ones you'll find the paper bags are quite beneficial. Uh, the beauty of the paper bag is that you can write on the outside and of course this would mean that you should throw in a couple of pencils or writing instruments of one sort or another. I would not recommend uh, any pens at all because oftentimes you're collecting it's very wet out there and if your materials like the paper bag gets wet then you're going to have a problem with running and you won't be able to figure out because the ink has run together and you don't know what you have and where you got it or what you found it under, etc. Now I've developed a, a field label that I fill in routinely with my collections. Uh, that has all the pertinent data that you might want to include like the date and the location if it's growing on a tree, what kind of tree, if you happen to know that, what kind of habitat, any outstanding features that you may want to note. For example, did it turn blue when you bruised it or cut it? Uh, did it produce milk or latex-like material? And, mater and items like that. I will take the label and put it in with a specimen if I wrap it in wax paper or put it into the paper bag or right on the outside of the paper bag, pretty much the same information. In many areas, because of the season that we collect in that the mushrooms and puffballs and similar fungi come up, you'll find that an insect repellent is of the utmost importance. Uh, in our area here, in North Carolina, for example, we find that not only is it a mosquito problem, but we also have some very serious tick problems. Uh, we have some serious chigger problems and so on and so forth. So uh, I would recommend always carrying some insect repellent and spray yourself down pretty well. In addition, uh, you'll find that the purchase of a good knife is a wise investment, especially if you're going to be collecting uh, for any length of time. And once you start collecting, you'll probably get addicted to being outdoors and collecting mushrooms and puffballs, etc. I find a knife of, of this uh, stature is quite good. It's a very tough, strong knife, so I can dig into the soil and get the base of the mushroom, which is very important for identification purposes. Can also get into wood and pry out anything that I might wish to remove from a standing tree or a log on the ground. Um, I do find that a knife is one of the most valuable instruments you can take in the field with you for collecting. It's very versatile. You'll find that once you get involved that a hand lens is worth the investment. You can get a very good hand lens for a relatively inexpensive cost. Uh, and you'll find that some of the characteristics that you'll need to know as far as um, identification purposes, a hand lens is very, very helpful. If you like to collect small fungi, small mushrooms or similar kinds of um, fungi, you'll find that a variety of containers, either cardboard like this or perhaps plastic, uh, will keep your small materials intact and it won't damage when you're putting them into a large container like this basket here. Uh, if you use a plastic container, uh, I would urge you to uh, 
get the material out of the plastic container as fast as possible once you get it back from the field. If you're in the field on a warm day, uh, every now and then stop and open the top of your plastic container to allow some air to get in there. If you don't, you're going to find some uh, really fast mildew and mold fungi developing on your collections, and that certainly is not what you want to do. I carry a couple of other items with me that uh, seem to uh, come in handy at times. I'll have a little field notebook kind of thing that I might want to jot something down in addition to my field label that I would have probably the pertinent information on. Um, sometimes you find it might very helpful um, in starting a spore print when you're in the field. And that's very easy to do. I take along a blank pad of paper like this and simply take the paper off, lay the mushroom cap on the top, and fold it into uh, or up with this plastic wrap here, as you see. Wax paper, not plastic, excuse me. And oftentimes you'll have the beginning of a spore print once you get back to the, your house or to your lab that is necessary for uh, identification purposes. Now if you get into collecting, and I think you'll find once you get into the really wonderful world of looking at mushrooms and other fungi out in the field, you get addicted after a while and you want to go out and look for more and collect more, etc might get adventurous, so you might want to think about throwing in a compass, especially if you get back into the wilds of some of our national parks and national forests. Here in North Carolina, of course, we in Tennessee, we have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a wonderful place to collect in. Uh, North Carolina has five national forests of, of some large size, so you, you could get turned around occasionally in there, so you might want to consider taking a compass along. Nowadays, of course, the modern thing is a GPS unit. And these are relatively inexpensive now, and they're quite handy and not too heavy. They're easy to carry, so you might want to consider that possibility. I almost always take a camera along, and of course, in the age of digital cameras, these things are very, very valuable. You can take a really good image of the material that you're collecting and have that for reference once you get back with the actual specimen. And sometimes it's amazing what you can pick up with a, taking an image or a picture of your specimen that you just failed to notice when you were collecting it in the spot. So you might want to consider that possibility, or a conventional camera as far as that goes. You may wish occasionally to do some identification on the spot. In that case, you might want to throw in some of the handy field guides that we have. These are just examples of three of them. Uh, we have quite a number of other ones that are available. Um, they have the advantage of being relatively small, so you can carry them without too much trouble. But as you can see what has happened here, we're getting into a situation in our collecting basket that the thing probably weighs 100 pounds now. And you might want to weigh, pun intended here, the advantage or disadvantage of carrying all this stuff. Remember now, you're collecting specimens that you have in here, so you can't put these heavy items like this book or this camera on top of them. You've got to damage them. But a lot of people have backs, backpacks now, and that works well, throwing in a field guide or two, put your camera in the back there. In other words, keep your collecting basket as such that you won't damage or at least have minimal damage to your specimens. So with all this in mind, uh, it's not going to cost you a whole lot. A uh, second mortgage on your house will probably work out well. Uh, happy collecting and good collecting, and don't get lost in the woods.